Hey, this is Blake Angelos here at Chuck Levin's Washington Music Center with the Next Generation flagship synthesizer from Yamaha, the Montage M. So the original Montage was built on three guiding principles. Great sound, amazing real-time control, remarkable workflow. Montage M ups the game in all three of those areas. And today I'm gonna to show you some of the really cool things about this new instrument right here. Montage M comes in three models. For synthesis wanting the sound in a smaller footprint, that's the 61 key Montage M6. For keyboardists that need the extra room, the 76 key Montage M7 is perfect. Now, for pianists that are looking for a full 88 keys, that's what this one's all about right here. This is the Montage M8X. This keyboard is the best feeling synth action I've ever played in a weighted action keyboard in my life. And the reason why that is, is because there's an all new action design that we call GEX. This action is amazing. It takes design cues from our concert grand pianos and our hybrid pianos. But that's not all. The X in Montage M8X signifies polyphonic aftertouch, which allows you to individually modulate held notes with pressure. GEX also provides really fast key repetition behavior that's typically found in grand pianos. And let me tell you, you have to experience this action. It feels amazing. Montage M sounds amazing with three synth engines. There's the all new ANX for recreating the warm vintage sound of analog synths. AWM2 for realistic recreations of acoustic instruments and FMX for dynamic cutting edge modern synth sounds. You can combine sounds from all three engines within a single performance. So what a performance is, it's the only playable mode in Montage M. Performances consist of voices that are assigned to parts and each performance can contain up to 16 parts. Now, eight of those parts can be played simultaneously. They can be freely split across the keyboard or layered, muted or soloed and controlled by arpeggios and motion sequences and more. So let's take a look at these three engines in detail. So what is ANX? ANX is our new virtual analog engine. It recreates the warm classic sound and behavior of an analog synthesizer with a host of different sophisticated modulation options, including two filters, there's 10 filter types, three oscillators that have five different waveforms, oscillator self-sync, ring modulation, FM, wave shaper as voltage drift, and aging settings to simulate that analog synth behavior. It's integrated into this motion control system, which is our real-time uh, parameter control that adds a lot of cool motion and different just textures to the sound. Man, you can create so many different sounds with this ANX engine. Check this out. So this first performance that I have up is called one of those PAT. So this is polyphonic aftertouch is what that PAT is referring to. Now the ANX engine is capable of producing 16 voices of polyphony. The cool thing about this sound is because it has polyphonic aftertouch, you'll hear me move a single um, finger and you'll hear it modulate the sound. It'll open the filter, so check it out. Check this out. I'm gonna play a little bit of polyphonic aftertouch on that third in this B flat chord. Or I could play the fifth or the root. So polyphonic aftertouch is a great feature on the M8X. It's super expressive. You can use it on ANX sounds, but you can also use it on all the other engines as well. So let's listen to a few more of these ANX only sounds. So let me show you something that's kind of cool here though. If you notice on the um, M8X here and all Montage M, this is a big difference between the Montage is this quick edit screen. It's a 512 by 64 quick edit screen. And when I play a sound like this, I have extremely um, quick access to all three of the oscillators um, right here. It's easy to get to stuff. So if I'm in here and I'm playing this sound here, 
and I want you to get to the filter. I just touched filter right here and now I see both of the filters. So immediately I can sweep cutoff frequency and resonance. If I go to the third oscillator, which has a noise oscillator, and you'll see that noise level here is set to zero, but I can bring that in really fast. Editing of these parameters with this screen is amazing. And check this out, if I go to the effects category, let's say, so I'm in here looking at this sound, Autumn is the name of this synth sound. It has what's called a BCM Compressor 376, so it's got a compressor assigned to one of the effects. Well, let's say I want to change that to a different effect. I can change it right here, and I see all of the, all the different effects that are in front of me. So let's say I move it up to something like um, the Control Phaser. So now I have a phaser assigned to it. And I only have phase control and feedback that I can grab right here, but let's say I want to look at this in a little bit more detail. When I touch this Page Jump button, it's going to take the information in the screen and put it in the touch screen with more parameters that I can look at. So now if I want to edit some different parameters that I can't have access to here, I can edit them right here. And let's say I go to maybe the three band EQ and I want to now look at that in this screen. If I hold the shift button down and touch page jump, it sends me over to the EQ page. So there's this bi-directionality between the quick edit screen and the full edit screen right here. This is a huge update from the montage. It makes editing on this instrument so much faster. So if you're a synthesis and you want to experiment with um, sounds, you have quick edit, easy edit, but it's really easy to get around on here. Super cool. Here's a few more of these A and X sounds. We also have seamless sound switching, so when I switch to a new sound, you still hear the previous sound, but I'm on a new sound. Didn't cut off the previous one. Now when I change scenes, I love what this does. I want to show this one. All ANX, so they're drum grooves, but each one of these are separate parts, right? So remember, eight parts can be played simultaneously on a montage, and any of those parts can be any of the three technologies. So far, we're only talking about ANX, but all these little drums right here. So if I want to solo something, they've kind of restructured this too. So I hold down shift, hit solo, and I can solo the kick drum, or a little hi-hat sound, a little synth drum thing. If I want to get out of it, I just hit the solo button again. If I want to mute track, same thing, I hit shift mute. I can mute things out. So it's, it's really changed as far as how things work on this instrument. Um, just everything's much faster to access to do stuff like that. So here's another sound called AN Synth Orchestra PAT, so polyphonic aftertouch. <laughs> cool but I also have scenes that are right here so what a scene is is it saves 
um, basically quick edit style offsets to the sound. So, and they can really change the sound pretty dramatically because you can store effect settings, you can store filter settings and so on. So if I play a different scene, a little different timbre. Totally different timbre. A little bit different envelope too, envelope. So the second engine that we're going to talk about is the AWM2 engine. So that stands for Advanced Wave Memory 2, and it's our sample-based synthesis engine. Now, previous Yamaha synthesizers like Montage and Motif XF offered up to eight elements per voice. So what's an element? An element is a single waveform component of sound with its own pitch EG, filter type, amplitude EG, um, EQ, and LFO. So a single element can function as a playable voice, and there's tons of voices in these instruments that just have a single element. And eight elements, you think about that, well, that offers even more expressiveness. So we have great eight element pianos, beautiful things like that. Montage M though, really ups the game as far as AWM2. It moves from eight elements of montage, you now have up to 128 elements per part in this instrument. It is very cool. This allows you to have ultra high definition sound creation, especially for nameable sounds like pianos and strings, um, emulative sounds. So check this out. I'm going to grab this sound here. This is called CFX Concert. Anybody that's a Montage or Modi X owner knows this sound, but when you see CFX Concert in that instrument, it's four parts. Each part is a component of the sound. So there's a soft layer, a hard strike layer. There's the layer of the sound that is undamped above the G here on a grand piano. There's no dampers. So they have a, 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 a part for that. And then there's a part for the key off sound. That's four parts for a single instrument sound. That same sound exists here in Montage M8X though as a single part. And you see right there, it says 18 elements. And this is the CFX concert. Our Top of the line grand piano that we make at Yamaha. But the fact that it exists in a single part makes it a lot easier to do things like use this in a sequence so you don't have to use all four parts. A single part does this. And you'll find all of the pianos. There's lots of new pianos in Montage M. CFX Concert, that was in Montage, but now we have the Hamburg Grand. This is a, uh, a German concert grand piano that we sampled in Hamburg, Germany. Hence Hamburg Grand. And this one has 21 elements. And they're both great pianos. They have entirely different sounds and different character to them. So it's they're useful for different types of music. I like CFX concert maybe for a jazz quartet or something where I really want the sound to project, but for a ballad or something like that, solo piano, I really love this Hamburg Grand. But if you want something maybe more Austrian, how about the Imperial Grand? So this was originally, you could download this content and load it into your montage. Now we built it in. And this one has 17 elements. Entirely different sound with that Bosendorfer piano as well. Finally, we have a felt piano in here now. So the felt piano is a U1, which is our upright piano. When you press the um, soft pedal down on a traditional U1, a piece of felt drops in front of it and that gives you that, that sound. Well now, a, a lot of composers really like to use the felt piano because it has this beautiful intimate quality. So check it out, here's the felt piano. I love what the super knob does too. Again, the super knob, the macro controller, existing in Montage, it's here. It has actually cooler lights though in Montage M, which I love. But what this does is it allows me to move a bunch of parameters. You see it controlling these assignable knobs. So these are all being controlled simultaneously. So like more felt is one of the assignable knobs here. Now I can individually move that as well and I can release it from the super knob if I want. But if I turn it all up, it's doing all of these things simultaneously. So if I turn this all the way to the top, you get this. More effects, more felt, really cool. 
that's all new content. Other pianos, there's a, the C7 is in this instrument. Um, there's just a whole bunch of new pianos and electric pianos in Montage M. So for electric pianos, this, oh, the 78 RD, the RD78 natural drive. There's a little bit of drive to it. So this is one of the new ones in here. If I turn up the super knob. Gives it a little bit more drive. Another sound in here that I really want to show. Very cool thing about, and this is, um, again, AWM content. But with these organs, we now have the VCM rotary speaker simulation. So we initially released that, I think, on the YC series in OS 1.2, and it changed the game. The rotary speaker is such an important component of the sound. So when you listen to these organs, they just sound much richer, fuller, with that VCM rotary speaker. But another thing that I love about the organs now is that we really listen to our customers. So many people said, hey, I have a question for you. Can I use these faders like drawbars? Is there a way to reverse the direction of the, of the fader so they operate like drawbars? On a montage, we'd have to say, no, no. On a montage M, we say, yes, look at this. So it's pulling down. There's actually a setting in here that allows you to do that for organ sound. People that really want to experience kind of the organ vibe, Montage M will totally deliver that now. It's awesome. Now you might've noticed when I was showing that organ that I was using the ribbon controller to, uh, to access or to change the speed of the rotary speaker. Now you can assign this to anything, but the ribbon's really cool here. It's backlit, there's five different segments in here. Right now I have it set for stop, um, for slow and fast rotary. I can also hit the hold button so it holds it into place if I have this set up if I want. Um, but the new ribbon controller is really cool with the backlight on here. So in the original Montage M, the preset wave memory in that instrument was 5.67 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. Montage M doubles it to 9.97 gigabytes of internal preset wave ROM. Another thing that's cool is that the flash memory in the original Montage was 1.75 gigabytes. Well, now it's 3.8 gigabytes in Montage M. Another thing that I like to point out at this point is this instrument is actually capable of delivering 400 notes of polyphony. And the polyphony is separated between the preset wave, so that's 128, the user wave memory gives you an additional 128 um, notes of polyphony, the FMX engine is 128, and the ANX engine is 16 voice polyphony. So there you go, up to 400 notes of simultaneous polyphony in this instrument. That's a big upgrade. I'm gonna play a little bit more AWM content because there's so much new content in here, especially in things like orchestral percussion, um, sound effect stuff, orchestral uh, string sections. Check it out. First one I'll play here is called Tam Tam Adventure. So this is an eight part performance. Um, a Tam Tam, if you don't know, it's, it's those big gong things that you have in orchestras. <laughs> So this sound set alone is really cool, but when you add all of the motion control things, all of the effects, you can do some amazing stuff with sounds like this. So check it out. As I change scenes, it really changes the game. Cool effects. Now notice over here, the arpeggio light just turned on. So there's an arp arps that, that's going to trigger off here. That's a drum groove. modern video game soundtrack in one performance. Tam Tams, who knew? Also, lots of new timpanis. There's a uh, cool. And then 
Now, a cool thing about this is sometimes it's, it's um, you know, you've, you see and you kind of find where the sounds are, but you may not actually know exactly what maybe the super knob does until I move it, obviously. But that's why we have this cool audition button. Audition allows you to play a demo sequence for each of the performances that are in this instrument, but they actually do things like move the super knob, so they give you some idea of what's happening in the performance. So I'll just play the audition on this one here called Round Robin Timps. Please. Pretty cool. So now I know. Here's one that's called Cinema Action Riser. Again, one of the things I love about our sound designers, we have a, a pretty good stable of sound designers and they all are great musicians. They all have pretty amazing careers behind them, but they all come from different places. So one of our sound designers is very much into film scoring. And so he's designing these sounds that are just unbelievable things that sound just, um, that would sound great in any sort of a movie. So check this out. That was the whole audition. Now I'm sitting here between these two HS7 speakers and, and I hear this in stereo. You're hearing this in stereo. Is that not amazing? The sounds in here are just unbelievable. So this performance here is called Tyrannosaur. I wonder what that sounds like. I love when you release the keys, it does that pitch at the end of it. So is that roaring sound? But there's still a chord in there. That's so cool. You have all these new left hand controls. I'm gonna show you a couple of things about this too. So we have a new keyboard hold button. I love this um, for just playing chords. So if I can play a chord like this, right? And I can always use the sustain pedal to hold that chord down. But what the keyboard hold does is it holds the chord for me and won't release it until I play a different chord. It allows you to play like a sound like this maybe edit the sound without having to re-trigger it, but I love it for playing just chords and having it automatically sustained and then cut off the previous chord. It's a really cool performance thing that I'm definitely going to be using when I'm playing live, that new keyboard hold button. So this new performance here is one of my favorites. It's called SFZ Tremolo BPM Sync. It's an orchestral performance that's one of my favorite that we've ever done. Um, it incorporates motion sequences, um, it incorporates arpeggio stuff. It's just, it's so cool. And the scenes really dramatically change the orchestration of the, uh, of this, of the sound here. Check it out. Tremolo strings.
see the bit of eye candy in the screen here? Another thing they added right here um, is uh, that little oscilloscope. But since I'm looking at the screen, check this out. You have these new um, display knobs underneath the um, underneath the display that change in context to what you have in here. So let's look at display mode here. So when I turn this, it's going to change how the uh, what what I can view here. So in this first thing, I have the um, both the velocity and the key range. If I move it forward, I have variation reverb stand, dry level, and pan positioning. Um, I have whether or not motion sequence and part is on in here. Um, it has channels, channelization for both internal sounds and external sounds independently. So right now, if I want to put the internal channel for the second part, I can freely change my channels just like that, just like here, sorry. Go to transmit and see, channel C, change it to one, two, or eight, 16. And if I go to the touch right below it, the external, that's for my external MIDI controller. So on the fly, right on the screen, you can change MIDI channels right here with this new display mode here. And the view mode will change kind of how things are set over here. But again, before I would have to do this um, by either pressing a button repeatedly or getting into the touch screen, these, these knobs really make things um, much quicker to edit, much quicker to get around on. Um, really cool. Love these display knobs that they added. So the third engine in Montage M is FMX. This is the FMX engine, eight operator, 88 algorithm. We had it in Montage. It's in this instrument as well. Um, but there's some new sounds in here um, that I just love. One of them is called 24 Operator Organism. Um, and we just interviewed the sound designer who created this sound. And I just love, uh, he does a lot of very um, electronic sounds. He's an artist in his own right. Very interesting person. Love how he names. See, you can name all of these assignable knobs because you can assign them to different parameters, and then you can tell right on the front. So mutation A, mutation B, uh, resonance fold. There's a wave folder in here, and I can I can instantly grab it with just the knob here, or of course I can assign it to the super knob and do the same thing. Just a cool special effects sound that's completely all FMX right there three parts FMX. Another one called poly or a positronic. That's a cool sound. But of course FM does amazing uh, you know electric pianos, all the traditional FM sounds, they're in here as well. But the new sounds, there's a lot of really cool, synthy, interesting sounds. And of course, you have all three engines at the same time. There's FM, total ballad piano sound. You can go from just being really weird, really outer space sounds to totally... This one moves kind of the... mixes these three sound engines differently together. See, seamless sound switching, just move to the new sound, still hearing the old sound. String salad. So ANX strings, FMX strings, and AWM2 strings. touch in there. So many cool sounds in Montage M. So you notice that things have changed over on this side. On the Montage, there were lots more buttons over here, but I really like how this works. It's very visual and the lights are very helpful in here as well. So when I press this Live Set button, um, Live Set is a collection of up to 16 performances in this grid. 
So it turns these blue, and then I can select sounds in the touch screen, but you notice it's changing over here as well. So I can select sounds either way. I have a hardware button to select my sounds in a live set. So if I'm in a gig and I play a piano and I want to switch to this nylon dream sound here, I see it right here. I can touch right here. Right? If I want to go to huge analog bass, I can touch it here or I can go right here. Right? So very kind of cool setup here. Now, when I go to category search, touch this right here, I'm in category search now. Um, so what category search, this allows me to search by category. Now, let's say you bought a montage M, because I know you did, and you had a montage before. Um, and what you're concerned with, I want to hear just montage M sounds, how do I get to them? So you notice right here in attribute, I can select different attributes. So if I want to just listen to AWM2 content, I can do that. If I just want to listen to ANX content, and all you see now is that content. <clears throat> but if I want Montage M content, right there, touch Montage M, now that's all I'm seeing. Okay, so now that I'm just looking at Montage M content, I'll go back to the category over here, and I touch Piano, and that's all that I'm going to see is just the new Montage M pianos. So I told you there were a lot of pianos. Here you go. You can see them right here. Now notice I'm using that display knob. It changed its function because I'm in a different screen now. So you have Nashville C3, you have the felt piano, you have a U1 in here now. And then there's all sorts of just different things that they've changed in here with just different sounds. Uh, the vinyl sample piano. It's on a record, see? That kind of stuff. So really easy to get around and find different um, sounds in this instrument with the category search. And you notice this light here, how it changes. It's really cool. I really like how this works. And with the new display knobs, I don't miss any of this stuff because the display knobs do so much of the heavy lifting when you're looking at stuff and navigating through things. It's really cool. Another cool update with Montage M over the previous model is library locations. In the previous Montage, you had eight library locations. Well, now you have 16 library locations. So what does that mean? That means I can load in up to 10,420 additional performances into this instrument. That's in addition to the 2,700 that are already in here. So you can add a whole lot of sounds of your own sounds and really customize this to your music, to whatever you do. Another thing that we've added in here is what we call Pure Analog Circuit 2. Pure Analog Circuit was in Montage M. All that is, it's a very high-end D to A converter that just makes everything sound good. Well, when you sit down at this instrument and you play original Montage sounds, and all of them are in here, you'll notice that things sound a little better in this instrument, and that's because of Pure Analog Circuit 2. It improves Things like noise, it increases the dynamic range, it lowers crosstalk, it lowers low frequency phase and distortion rates. It's super high-end uh, digital analog converter. Everything just sounds better. It has more detailed low-ends, more presence, more everything. Just sounds better. That's pure analog circuit too. That's what's in this instrument. So I'm going back to this, uh, this ANX sound. I want to show you one of the coolest buttons that they added to this instrument. And anybody that's a programmer, anybody that wants to get into programming will love this. It makes it so much easier to see what's going on in a sound. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select, um, I'm going to go over here to part select, which is right here, right? Um, and I'm going to select this part. So now I'm looking just at the single part here. We have our quick controls, right? And that's pretty cool in here. But what I want is, I want to be able to really have a good overview of this sound. Now I told you. On the um, on ANX, it has three oscillators, and those three oscillators are showing up here. These are levels of each of those oscillators. This one here is, is the noise, so you have control over that on the front panel. You can instantly, you know, mix the components of the sounds in as you want, right? And the noise. So you see things pretty well, but do you really want to see a cool overview? I touch this navigation button. So first, I'm touching the part, and then I hit navigation. And look at that. That is an overview of the entire sound I have in front of you. So you see over here, you have your envelope generator for each of the oscillators, your LFOs for each of the oscillators right here. Oscillator 1, 2, and 3, like you see here, with the noise oscillator, which you can see over there as well. You have mixing control, LFO, amplitude, all these things. Now, the cool thing about this is that 
if I want to really take a look in detail of any of these components, those are all touchable. So let's look at oscillator one right here. I touch in the screen, it brings me right to oscillator one. And I can see it in front of me. And now I can get into m m the, the deeper editing. You have that editing over here as well. And I got to show you this. This is also bi-directional as well. So right now I have sawtooth. That's the wave right here. If I change it here, you'll watch it change over here too. Saw two, see? Square. So it's bi-directional. And wherever my hand is in here, if I want to go to output level, which is set right here, if I change it, you notice I can use the knob. I can use this. I can touch and use the data wheel. But I can also grab this right here. And you notice it's changing over here. So there's two, all these different ways. Wherever my hand is, is um, located is where it's easiest for me to get. I can edit it multiple ways simultaneously. Again, that navigation, that is one of the coolest things that we've done. And it really shows just everything you need to know about what you want to edit in an ANX sound or AWM2 or FM. I mean, if I change it to an FM sound, for example, I'll go over and do that real quick. Let me just find, um, how about my, uh, right here, 24 FM sound right here. Now, if I touch navigation, the screen changes. Now you see things, like if I touch oscillator, now we're looking at um, operators in here, right? See that these things show up over here, those uh, different... Um, parameters. So it just whatever you're in, um, the navigation will get you to this cool overview, really cool button that they added. So I set up this little three part performance to show you something else that's pretty cool about this instrument that's an upgrade from montage. And what it has to do is keyboard control. What keyboard control is, um, right now you won't hear anything because I don't have the keyboard control engaged. It's this right here, and there's this little icon that you see. When I turn on keyboard control in a performance like this, now you'll hear me play, you'll hear the piano in here, right? Because I have what's called keyboard control on. So you can turn on and off keyboard control, you can save that in scenes on a montage, but what they did was they added an additional button here that's called keyboard control, and I love this. I think people that are live players, people that are church players are really, really going to dig this. Um, I know, for example, church players I know really love to use the um, faders and the buttons to select things um, and maybe not mess with the touch screen so much. Um, it's definitely the faders. What keyboard control allows you to do is it allows you to turn on parts as needed. So if I'm in here playing and I have my, my, you know, my piano in here and I wanna add this string layer, this pad layer rather, all I gotta do is turn on keyboard control and now that shows up. And then that fader right here controls the volume of that sound really fast. So I can do it on the fly. Now I could have saved it in a scene, but I find a lot of players really like to be able to do this live. And the cool thing about this is that if I do this right... Now I turned off keyboard control. Now I'm just on piano again. You notice it didn't cut it off. It just allowed me to hold that, that sound as I held the sustain pedal and turn off keyboard control and bring me back just a piano, right? Now I want to engage the, the pad again. If I hit this button here, it turns on electric piano. I want to adjust the volume of the piano and maybe bring out the electric piano and bring the pads down. Now, if I like that sound, I can hold down shift and store it in one of the scenes over here and recall it with a single button. But the ability to just turn on parts on and off means that I can have eight different sounds in front of me right here. Again, you can split and layer them as needed, or you can use them as individual parts, as individual sounds, and I can instantly turn them on and off. In fact, one of my goals when I get back is to take this on one of the gigs that I play and see if I can do the entire gig. And this is an R&B um, top 40 kind of band. I wanna see if I can do the entire gig with just a single performance and use keyboard control to do it. It's one of my challenges to myself and I think I'll be able to do it. That's a cool thing. I wouldn't be able to do that with the original Montage. You can do that with Montage M. So let's talk about workflow. We talked about sound, talked about control. Let's talk about workflow. One of the coolest things about Montage M, among all the cool things, is what's called ESP. This is the Extended Soft Synth Plugin. So this is coming for Montage M in 2024. What ESP is, 
is it replicates the Montage M in your DAW, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, so Cubase, Live, Logic, and it replicates the Montage M as a VST3 or audio unit component, so it's a virtual instrument. That's right, you can work and edit on Montage M sounds wherever you happen to be with or without the Montage M connected. This is very cool. It'll be free to any Montage M owner. Um, you can do things like open up multiple instances of the plugin in a DAW and have like basically double or triple or quadruple the power of your Montage M. And the best thing, again, is it's free for all users. So look for the extended soft synth plugin coming in 2024 for Montage M. Montage M connects to the computer with a single cable, just like Montage did. So you have the USB MIDI and audio connectivity. So for MIDI, you get all 16 channels. You also have a brand new dedicated DAW remote button right here that brings you into DAW remote mode right here. When you touch settings, you can set it up for different um, DAWs that are supported here. So we have Live, Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase. And the way this works too in the DAW mode is we have track. So track controls these faders now become um, volume faders for tracks in the DAW, pan positioning. You can start and stop with the uh, repositioned um, transport control right here. If I touch plug in, now these knobs can be assigned to any virtual instrument inside your DAW. So you can control different controllers right here. You can assign this and customize that in the DAW. And then when I touch transport, you'll notice that the sound stuff shows up over here. So I can control the Montage M sounds here, but I still have transport control of the DAW. So DAW remote built in, that's very cool. The other thing, because it's an audio and a MIDI interface, you connect this cable and you can monitor all of your stuff coming from the DAW through Montage M's Pure Analog Circuit 2 output. So things sound really good. You can play virtual instruments using this with the single cable because you're hearing the audio of the virtual instrument. You're using the MIDI component to control it and play it in real time. That's really cool. That's this workflow, this connection. And now with ESP, you have the Montage M plugin inside with all your other plugins, controlling the, um, the DAW with the remote control, playing the sounds, combining sounds. It's a very cool workflow with Montage M. On the back of Montage M, you'll notice that there are two USB 2 device ports. One of them you can use for loading in um, sounds from a USB flash drive, but the other one is there to connect um, USB um, controllers or drum pads or whatever. You can connect directly to the Montage M there, just direct USB, and you can play the sounds um, inside Montage M with a controller. That's pretty cool. So one thing that's definitely different about Montage M is the entire operation of this instrument is much faster. Everything just clips along quicker. The screen is more responsive. But one way to really illustrate that is with this cool um, FM generation technology that we call Smart Morph. So what Smart Morph is, is it uses a machine learning um, platform in this instrument that takes different FM sounds that you load into um, parts 9 through 16. Remember, a performance has up to 16 parts. So what it does is it uses parts 9 through 16. You load in FM sounds, and then you run this machine learning um, process that takes elements of that sound and creates a composite sound, places that in part 1, and then you can access the sounds on this cool um, grid. And rather than talk about it, let me just show you how it works here. So what I'm going to do is in part one here, I just made an initialized FMX performance, which is one operator, just a sine wave. Anybody that's older will recognize the dial tone. <laughs> the dial tone is that sound. Anyway, check this out. I'm going to go in here to Smart Morph and hit edit, and I'm going to select some different FM sounds. Let's see, how about a, a synth bass sound? Disco bass, that sounds good. Hit enter, select a different sound here, like maybe a, um, a chromatic percussion sound. It's a vibraphone sound, that's a cool one. Very pad one. How about a cool electric piano sound? So these are all different sounds. Now when I select them, I can play them directly, right? FM by, very pad one. Cool, and then, so these four different sounds 
Now what I do is I hit this learn button and it's going to generate that machine learning to create a new sound. Now, here's why this is faster. If you remember on the montage, if I do this, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to do this in a montage. It'll do its thing and, it, and you have to wait a little bit. Check out how fast Smart Morph works on the Montage M. Hit it. Done. That was it. So now, so I can move through here on this grid and morph through different sounds. And if I like this one and I save it like, I save it, that's what the part one will be now is that sound there. Or if I move it here, it'll be that sound. But let's say I don't like any of this. So I want to run another one. Again, that's done. It's done. If I do it again, boom, it runs a different one. If I do it again, but it takes about a second to do it now before you were looking at 15 to 20 seconds. So if you think that um, this is fast, wait until you get anywhere on this instrument. Everything is so much faster and so much more streamlined on Montage M8X, but definitely in Smart Morph, you can totally see it. So there it is, the Montage M. You have a six, seven, and the AX right here. Three models for three different types of players. If you have any questions and you wanna check this out, cause you do wanna come and check this out, go to Chuck Levin's Washington Music Center and check out Montage M. Once again, this is Blake from Yamaha. Thanks for watching.